Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. It's a new year. This is our first show of 2024. We thank you very much, especially our subscribers. Our numbers are now close to 60,000 subscribers. We could not have done this without you. So we say thank you very much for those who have really been with us. When we started this channel, we did not have a single subscriber. But you've kept us going. And we say thank you very much. We salute. We ring in the new year with you. Happy New Year 2024. We did a lot since we started the show. But we want 2024 to be better. 2024 can be better if you really engage us. If you really share information with us. If you take this show and share it with your friends and family. It helps for the numbers to keep going up. For 2024, we want to make sure that you are enjoying this show and we want you to be more receptive. 2024 is going to be a new theme. The theme of 2024 is African hunger. Africans are hungry. As a result, they are shouting and kicking out their colonizers. France, for example, they are kicking them out. So African hunger is the main theme of the show of today. When we talk of African hunger, we are talking about the paradox of poverty in Africa. We have a continent with a lot of natural resources, yet the youth of this continent is hungry. They cannot feed themselves with three square meals a day. This hunger is physical, but we're talking more about metaphorical or metaphysical hunger. Hunger is not just limited to being deprived of food. It means being deprived of opportunities that young people in other countries are enjoying every day. So when we talk of African hunger, we talk about hunger in a metaphorical sense and in a physical sense. You see our young people traveling from the motherland to Europe in search of greener pastures. This is a group of people. This group of people is hungry. They are hungry for better opportunities. They are not just hungry because they don't have food to eat. They are hungry because their need for self-actualization is not being met. And that's what the problem is. And when you look at most of these African youth, what is really driving them out of Africa is the lack of opportunities. Africans now are faced with what I call pre historical pre-occupations. Africans are worried about slavery, colonialism, and neocolonialism. Africans look at their past history, and they are longing for this past when things were more settled. In the days of Timbuktu, when you had the golden days of Africa, long and short-term trade, African countries were doing better, they were more stable, but when slavery came, Africans became chattel material. Okay, they became like goods that were sold, they were traded, just like animals. Okay? Then colonialism came. Africans were deceived that they're gonna be free. But colonial masters played games and still decided that Africans should not be free. Then later on you had what are called neocolonialism. The same colonial masters came back and started pulling the strings from behind the scenes. They installed caretaker presidents in the name of uh, real people who are leading countries that are free. But behind the scenes, they were pulling the strings and stealing our resources. So our people have had enough. The African youth has had it up to here. So now they are rebelling and they are fighting against their oppressors. So we're starting 2024 showing you the way the youth is fighting. So it's a metaphysical effort. People are rebelling against their livelihood. They are not happy, and they are doing everything to show that they are not happy. When you see the phenomenon of coup d'etat in Africa, it's not a strange phenomenon. It's, people say it's a knee-jerk reaction. No, it's not really a knee-jerk reaction. The people are revolting against their existence. And this is what we call metaphysical revolt. Then you also have the physical revolt where people say, okay, I'm not happy with my lot in my country. I'm not happy with what I'm getting. And 
I'm negating my whole existence in this continent. That's what the African youth is doing. And a lot of the blame goes to France because France is one of those colonial masters who does not want to leave Africa. And especially when you look at the new uh, pushes from Gabon to Mali, Burkina Faso, they're all saying they know French history. France emerged victorious because of Charles de Gaulle. But Charles de Gaulle built his country, then destroyed Africa. In every Francophone area, Charles de Gaulle went, he installed puppets who siphoned all Africa's resources to France. So today, France depends on Africa, but Africans are tired of France's exploitation, which is what is fueling the coup d'etat phenomenon in the Sahel region. The Sahel region has had enough, and the youth has decided to expel France. So we start with Burkina Faso. What is happening in Burkina Faso? This week, for the first time, we understand that Russia has opened a new embassy in Burkina Faso. France has left. Russia has come in. People may say Russia is not really a perfect uh, partner, but Russia is playing its cards, ca playing the cards well. Unlike dictating to Burkina Faso, Russia is playing games, making them feel that they are true partners. So the Russian embassy now is open, and Russia is ready for business. Russia doesn't have much to offer Burkina Faso, but Burkina Faso needs the arms. Ibrahim Traoré does not want to be overthrown in another coup d'état, the way he did uh, the coup d'état against Paul Henry Damiba. So he's getting a lot of Russian support. The Wagner Group is there. And now that Russia is opening an embassy in Burkina Faso, the youth are going to be clamoring. These are the sons of Thomas Sankara. They feel like they are avenging the death or assassination of Thomas Sankara. And finally, France has been kicked out. CAA has been kicked out. So the French currency is out. And now most of the countries in the Sahel region, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, they are not talking about introducing a new currency called the Sahel. OK? A currency is very important. Because I studied economics, and I can tell you, money is very important. The, the France, French franc, the franc is used to manipulate African economies. So now, if Africans can have their own currency, it will give them a lot of power. The echo was a contraption of France, which is why most African countries rejected it. They did not want it. Because you cannot introduce the echo, and you tell them that, oh, we're replacing uh, the French franc with the echo, which is still money printed by France. Come on. Who are you fooling? Africans have come of age. They are not foolish anymore. France cannot deceive them all the time. France deceived them before, but in the eyes of Emmanuel Macron, he is now realizing that, wow, these Africans have, they have wise up. They know what time it is. They are not stupid anymore. And this is why we salute the African youth. You are waking up from slumber. Unlike your forefathers, you are challenging France. You're making France look like a little child. Who could believe that little Niger would dictate terms to France? France was threatening, I'm going to invade. ECOWAS is going to invade. But because Africans stood in solidarity, they decided that they're not going to fight their brothers and sisters of Niger, which is why Mohamed Bazoum was not restored to power. Emmanuel Macron lost, and Niger now is standing proud. Niger is collaborating with Mali and Burkina Faso to keep France out of their country. So that's why the Africans in Niger have revolted, and we salute this revolt. This revolt is going to go to all the other countries in Africa. And you can see it even happening in the Central African Republic. Today, they, you may say, well, you don't like Russia, but the Central Africans are happy with Russia. Assange Tuadera is parading in his big house. He's protected by Russia, even though his people keep fighting and killing each other. But at least they are happy that France is out of the question. So French influence has been waning, waning, and waning in the Francophone zone in Africa. So this is a salutary step, and we're very happy for it. You can see the old pictures when France used to reign under people like Bokassa, 
and uh, Dico. France was reigning, playing all type of games, stealing all the resources. It has come to an end. France is exit. No more room for France. France is out. Okay? Then we'll take you next to Congo DRC. The elections have just taken place in Congo DRC. This is another country that is ripe for a coup d'etat. Who told you? Coup d'etats happen. Why? We're not saying that coup d'etats are better, but the people think coup d'etats are a better choice. When you are in a place where Western style democracy has failed, every time you have a leader like uh, Felix Tshisekedi, the first time he was not really elected legitimately, Joseph Kabila just handpicked him and made him president. This time he's looking for legitimacy and he's organizing a sham election. The opposition is running away and the police are killing people because some of these people don't want to accept that Felix Tshisekedi will win this election. But they are already projecting that Felix Tshisekedi will win by more than 76% of the vote. The opposition knows that the vote is fake. The Catholic Church, a major institution in that country, knows that the election is fake. The election is an institutional charade. It's just a way to fool the people. Too many irregularities. The opposition does not accept it. But Felicia Sekedi is going to use it and say, yes, now I'm a legitimate president. If you thought before I was not elected legitimately, this time I will tell you I was elected legitimately. Who is he fooling? Not the African people. Congo, Kinshasa, DRC. This is probably the richest country in Africa. But the people live in abject poverty. There's always fighting in the East. M23 and other rebel groups are just roaming all over the eastern part of the country. Felix Tshisekedi cannot do much to stem the tide of this conflict. So the conflict remains. This is a country with plenty. The people live in abject poverty. Why should this be so? And that's the question the youth of Congo, the RC, are asking. So when they rise tomorrow against Felix Tshisekedi, when a coup d'etat happens in Congo, the RC, do not say, I did not tell you so. I'm telling you that watch, watch, watch. A coup d'etat is coming to Congo DRC. Watch my words. It will not be long because the people are not happy. The place has so much money. Congo DRC is probably the richest country in Africa with so many natural resources, yet the, the foreign people, France, Belgium, they steal these resources. The common man in Congo DRC has nothing. And so there's African hunger. The hunger in Congo DRC is going to lead to a coup d'etat where they will kick out Felix Tshisekedi. From Congo now, we take you to La République du Cameroon. This also is not a good country. La République du Cameroon is a country that has been under the French orbit for a very long time. In fact, the leaders who were supposed to be patriotic, who were supposed to lead this country to independence, were killed by France. Umiobe, Félix Mumier, a, 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 Afana, and many other leaders. As Aijo was handpicked to run the country, on the day Aijo was celebrating the independence of Cameroon, the flag of foreign independence, the, the military guys who were patriotic were still fighting in the bush against French rule. But France wanted people they could manipulate, and they installed a marionette called uh, Amadou Babatura Aijo. How has it worked? It has been terrible for the people of Cameroon. In fact, you've just heard uh, the speech of uh, Paul Bia. Every year he makes the same speech, which he, he sandwiches the speech, then eventually he brings the same speech. Oh, things are very good. No, 2023 was a very bad year for the people of La Republic du Cameroon. And it was even worse for the people of Ambazonia, because more and more people were killed. If you listen to Bia's uh, end of the year speech, you think Cameroon is... Uh, a wonderful country. In 2023, the country is going to emerge. Who is he fooling? Himself. Because uh, he's the only non-entity left in that part of the world. The average Cameroonian knows that things were terrible, that they have been living poorly. So Paul Bia is not deceiving them. Uh, they know. Uh, but Paul Bia thinks he's still deceiving the people. No, he's not deceiving them. The people know that uh, their lot is really terrible. They, but you think in a country where there's petrol and other resources, the people can live well. No. Bribery, corruption, so many problems. Worst of all, the news 
who breaking for you is the legislating of homosexuality. This is a hot topic. Africans don't accept homosexuality. The Western world loves homosexuality. So a lot of the power groups in the West, like America, where they are, it's a gay country. They want to make the continent Africa to be a gay continent. Africans have been rebelling. So there's this conflict where the West is trying to impose the homosexual lifestyle to Africans. But the interesting thing is, in La Prepreme du Cameroon, there are a lot of people in Biya's government who are gay and who are homosexuals. So how can you be legislating, telling these people that their way of life is unlawful and they are in the government? So is this not a joke? This is the biggest joke of the century, which I see in La Republic of Cameroon. So we're still waiting for Godot. We're still waiting for the coup d'etat in Cameroon that is coming. BI is playing a lot of games, trying to reshuffle the cabinet, reshuffle the military officers. But his eyes have not seen God yet. God still has plans for Cameroon. And a coup d'etat is coming soon. Coup d'etat, coup d'etat, coup d'etat for Cameroon. Cameroon coup. Because the people in Cameroon are hungry. They have been hungry for more than 41 years. Bihar's stewardship has just been a mess. Okay? The people know it. The people are hungry, but they are afraid. They are afraid. Even the military guys are cowards. They would have taken the weakling Bihar out, but they are afraid to take him out. There's somebody who will rise up and take Bihar out. So we are waiting for another coup in La Republique du Cameroon. What about Mali? Tired of waiting in long lines at the emergency room or your doctor's office? You should be. Why wait in long lines for care? It's time for you to come to Lucille Urgent Care. Real care, no waiting. Lucille Urgent Care, the best place for true and loving care. Service at Lucille Urgent Care is convenient, fast, time efficient, affordable, accessible, transparent, and cost effective. Real treatment is your right. Indeed, it's not just a privilege or pejorative. Skip the emergency room's long lines, kiss the ER goodbye, say farewell to your old doctor's office, pay less, save time, enjoy the excitement of convenience, receive immediate treatment, get the health care you need quickly and affordably. Lucille Urgent Care offers many express services, rapid COVID-19 testing, on-site prescription, preventative lab services, imaging and x-rays, urgent medical treatment for common illnesses and injuries, routine vaccines and flu shots, work-related injury services, pre-employment, occupational annual and sports physicals, immigration exams, and much more. Same day treatment, rapid lab results, extended hours, weekend hours, no appointment necessary, no insurance necessary, no doctor necessary, walk-ins accepted, telemedicine available. We are open seven days a week with evening and weekend hours. We are located in Maryland, Lucille Urgent Care, 903 Half York Road, Towson, Maryland, 21204. Website, lucilleuc.com. Call at 443-275-1286 or 301-593-4897. Well, Mali is one of those countries in the Sahel. This week, we've received information that uh, MINUSMA, as part of the UN, has finally left the, the camps they had in Timbuktu. You remember Timbuktu in the old days? This was a trading center in Africa. So the government of Asimi Goita has asked MINUSMA to leave the country. And this is the last you can see of uh, the United Nations and other foreign uh, forces. Asimi Goita and his other uh, guys of the junta, they feel the UN has failed. So they are looking for ways that Russia and other foreign forces can assist the country to stem the tide of jihadists. Because insecurity is a serious problem in Mali, and it will continue for a while. What about Niger? Niger is facing the same problem. Niger has a whole lot of uranium. But we told you last week, France would pay for the uranium, France will pay them less than a dollar for uranium, then France will sell their uranium in the international market for $200. So did you, do you see how unfair this trade is? Do you see why the military guys in Niger are fighting to kick France out? Because this is very unfair trade. You buy something for me for less than a dollar, then you go and sell it for $200. Why should I not sell it myself? That's a question inquiring minds in Niger are asking. We should sell our minerals ourselves, not France. We should not be giving them to France. France sells them for big money, and we get peanuts. That's why the African people are hungry, and they want this hunger to end. 
So they've kicked France out of Niger. France is out. Macron is out. Bye-bye. Next, we take you to Nigeria. In Nigeria, to Nigeria is not a French colony, but there's hunger in Nigeria. The economy is not doing that well. Then, worst of all, there is insecurity. We've been talking about insecurity in Nigeria forever. We keep talking. Now we're sounding almost like a broken record. But don't take it this way. We just want you to know what is happening in this country, which is probably the biggest country, the most populous country in Africa. On, on Christmas Eve, we had a big story. We did not really air it early because we wanted to gather more information. In the past, we've been talking to you about insecurity in Nigeria. Muhammadu Buhari came to power, promising to end insecurity in Nigeria. He failed. After eight years, insecurity is going strong. He calls the people terrorists. He calls them bandits. But they are still there. They are still there because Nigeria is good for bad business. What we were expecting Buhari to do is to make it unprofitable for bandits to operate. Now Bola Tinubu has taken over uh, the stewardship of the state. He's trying, making a lot of economic reforms, but on the security side, Bola Tinubu needs to work harder. The same problems Nigeria has been facing with insecurity, they are still going on now. The, the massacre, you see this, these people are Christians. Why are Muslims massacring Christians? That's the question a lot of people are asking me. The, the situation is complex. It's not just about religion. There are so many factors that are multifaceted that you need to understand. But the primary factor, the cause of this conflict between Fulani herders and Southern farmers is the fight, the scramble for resources they scramble for limited resources, water, and places where they can do their work. Farmers stay in settled communities where they grow crops. Headers ply their trade by going to places using open grazing, where they take cattle, move around to feed these cattle. But this is a very old method of farming, the cattle uh, rearing. It's a, a very old method. So people think that in a modern society, they should not be going from place to place taking advantage of people's farms. This is what is creating the conflict between the herders and the settled farmers. The Nigerian government has not really do done a good job to deal with this problem. The conflict remains. So sometimes when these people attack a community, the way they did in Plateau State, they come back and take over the community. So the, the people now kick the Christians out, kill a lot of them, then they take over the homes of these Christians and all their property. Is this a fair way to live in a country? We don't think so. But no Nigerian government has been able to focus on this problem. They keep pay, paying lip service. Oh, the government will do something about it, will do something about it. But the sad thing is, these bandits, or the so-called bandits, terrorists, they have sent a letter saying that they are coming. Why did the Nigerian government not send security to protect the poor people in these communities? When these brazen terrorist Muslims, radical Muslims, who send a letter that we are coming, then you see uh, Buhari parading in uh, motorcades instead of protecting his people. So it's a joke. The people are really angry. It's a joke. We even have a video that will show you where Bola Tinubu is coming, and there are <coughs> so many car uh, vehicles in his entourage. What's this for? Why can we not protect our people? You're doing this just for you alone. What about your people who are dying? So the same thing that Buhari was doing is Bola Tinubu is continuing the same pattern. He has not changed the strategy as far as insecurity is concerned in Nigeria. And we're asking Bola Tinubu to change course. He's solving the problem the same way Muhammadu Buhari was solving it. It's just, just ignore the problem, the problem will go away. The problem is not going to go away. For these uh, northern uh, terrorists and bandits, insecurity is good business. They're not going to stop it. So long as they can continue seizing land from southerners and rearing their cattle, they will continue doing it. So Bola Tinubu needs to understand that even though he's a Muslim, he should not allow Muslims to be killing Christians in such big numbers. When you watch the videos of what has happened the last Christmas Eve massacre, 
is terrible. Terrible. You ask yourself, why must Christians die every day in the hands of Muslims? Radical Muslims. Radical Islam. Bolatinibu, why don't you want to do something about it? Why are you using the same playbook? It's because Bolatinibu is afraid. Because he doesn't want to antagonize people within his ruling cabal. From what we understand, these people are the ones sending these bandits to go and create mayhem in these uh, farming communities. So they, they have something to gain. So Bola Tinubu does not want to uh, annoy them. He may say something and the people will get angry and they will not vote, let, vote for him again. So he is just looking for power to stay as president while the people are dying every day. But we're telling people, this is a problem in Nigeria. We need to pay attention to this problem. So insecurity cannot continue in 2024. It has to end. So the people of Nigeria, take this upon yourself. You may have to take the law into your own hands, the way the Amatukun guys were doing it. So start protecting your communities. You have to start doing this in an organized fashion. Fight these northern bandits. Fight the northern bandits. Don't let them commit murder and go away free. Prepare. Form your own army. If the state doesn't want to help you, then you cannot just allow people to kill you like sheep taken to the slaughterhouse. Christians, rise up. Don't allow Tinubu's Muslims to kill you in vain. Don't die in vain. Form your own army and fight these radical Islam guys. Don't take no for an answer. Don't allow them to get weapons. Form your own private army because the, the government is not protecting you. You have to protect yourself. Don't be foolish. Why must you continue losing members of your family in face of a government that is not doing anything for you? So the answer to the problem is, do what the Amatukun guys were doing from your own private militia and protect your land. Buy rifles, buy guns, okay? That's the only answer these Muslim guys know. When you start returning this violence with violence and you are prepared, they will not attack your communities again. Send them back to the north. Let them go and graze in the Arab, uh, arid land in the north where there's no grass. That's what these Muslim useless people need to be. Let them go to the north and grace over that. Okay? So Christians, that's what you need to do. Send these northern bastards back to the north. Okay? Do that. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Finally, we take you to South Africa. This is where we're going to end our show. South Africa has some uh, floods, flash floods in the KwaZulu Natal area. And we sympathize with the people of South Africa who are going through tough times. But the biggest story in South Africa this week has to do with uh, the ICC, the International Criminal Court. South Africa is not happy with what is happening in Gaza, in the Middle East. Israel is using weapons to kill a lot of Palestinians. And South Africa thinks this is a form of apartheid and it's genocide. Although America is a big country, America is supporting Israel, America doesn't want to do anything about it. But South Africa is not happy. South Africa wants to challenge the moral conscience of the world to do something. What Israel is doing is exterminating the, the Palestinians in Gaza to wipe them out so that they can take over their land. This has been going on for so many years, it's even getting worse. Israel has carte blanche. America was supporting them. Biden is afraid of re-election, so he doesn't know what to say. So he just gives them carte blanche, do whatever you want, but just do it carefully so that I don't get a bad name. But already the international community is criticizing Israel, and South Africa is championing the cause of the Palestinians. South Africa has filed a case at the Hague International Criminal Court against Israel. What is going to happen? We know that America supports Israel, so much is not going to happen, but at least 
the international community will see the hypocrisy of the international order. When it concerns Israel, nobody talks about it. If it concerns Charles Taylor in Liberia, oh yes, he's a dictator. They will rise and do something about it. Now Netanyahu needs to be taken to the ICC. That's what South Africa is saying. Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, needs to be taken to the ICC to face judgment. The same way many African presidents have gone to the ICC. Okay? But will this happen? Well, <laughs> this exposes the hypocrisy of the international community. When it, 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 it involves Africans, yes, we'll take them to the International Criminal Court. When it involves people who are close to America, nothing should happen to them. So do you see why there, there are problems in the international community? Because America is partial. America doesn't handle stuff in a, an impartial way. So America is creating the problem. So this is our first show of the year. We think we've brought you a whole lot of news. We've told you that there's African hunger. Africans are unhappy with their plight. Historical preoccupations tell you that Africans are not happy where they find themselves in history. They've gone through slavery. They've gone through colonialism. They've gone through neocolonialism. They are not happy with this. So now Africans are self-conscious. So the burden of self-consciousness is making the African youth to rebel. They've had enough of what is going on, and they want to change their situation. So they are revolting. Then they are using coup d'etat as a form of experimentation. Now that democracy, the Western-style democracy, has failed Africans, they should experiment with another form of government, and that's what they are doing. They are experimenting. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Now more than ever, it is critical that medical facilities utilize modern, reliable electronic health records. Introducing Alexia HTC, the innovative, affordable online solution for physicians and patients. Doctors' visits, diagnoses, prescriptions, and billing have never been easier. With Alexia HTC, you can work more efficiently with the integrated flexibility medical professionals need today. Schedule a live demonstration. Call or visit us at alexiahtc.com. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.